Hey if you are welcome to another game of Casual Pro Gamer. Today we're once again doing a one versus one StarCraft game between OGS Supernova and Mil Stefano. As you can see, a Zerg versus Terran. So um yeah, same players as we did yesterday or the day before that. And um yeah, they were pretty well matched, so uh, we're going to see if um if that once again is the case. Well, the players will still be matched, but we'll see how the match goes, or the game rather. Um, yeah, this is part of a best of three, and um, I'm not sure if there is a third game. I'm not sure which of the three this is. I just know this is at least the best of three, maybe even more. So uh, we see a supply depot going down. Of course, the wall off is coming in, so no crazy uh, shenanigans for now. Um, yeah, he, the, the Zerg player is probably going into a fast hatchery because there is really no reason not to. The Terran player is a long way away and with two overlords out to scout he should have plenty of warning before something comes in. And once your spawning pull is up it only takes you 24 seconds to get Zerglings out. So as long as you have like a scout over here or over here then um, yeah, if you watch the mini app, you should have plenty of time to uh, to get Zerglings out. Uh, not to get them into position, but to at least get them out by the time that your opponent is there. So, indeed, the fast expansion, the barracks going down, of course, and um, I guess this guy is going into fast expansion as well, because his minerals are kind of ramping up. And uh, this is the one to build it. No, 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 no. He is going for that orbital command first. Okay, and going into the command center a little bit afterwards. And yeah, this guy is indeed the guy that's going to build that. So yeah, no offensive units out at all. Uh, the spawning pool is coming out. And as I said, once you have that out, because that takes 65 seconds, so that is a long time. But once you have that out, you have 24 seconds uh, only to, or you only need 24 seconds to get a complete army out, especially once you have queens, because that spawning pool is going to provide you with queens, and that is probably the major thing they uh, uh, that it provides, because I think the queens are even more important for the early game than um, than those crappy zerglings, because who needs those zerglings, man? Nobody needs those. Um, so we see two gas geysers being taken, two refineries built, no um, assimilators built yet, and that means he's not going for roaches, at least not for now, also not going for the speed upgrade on the zerklings, uh, at least not for now. Um, I don't know what he's uh, planning to do, maybe just building a whole lot of economy be before um, going into anything else. But yeah, we're going to uh, see two queens being produced just for that creep spread once again, and two new queens are being produced for that uh, larva inject. And yeah, that's uh, the standard play nowadays, at least by this guy. And uh, well, his opponent going for a second orbital command, obviously, a bunker in the front, three marines already waiting, the fourth one is probably coming out shortly. Um, well, yeah, after everything is done. Oh, he's going to build um, Tech Lab immediately for his starport. So that is Banshees coming out, I think. Because there is really no other reason to build a Tech Lab for your starport. And yeah, this is going to be for the starport eventually. He builds that on his barracks so that both of them will finish in similar time. I mean, this one will finish first, but... There's only a small amount of time between them, and there you can see it lands his uh, his barracks over there and going to attach the starport. So um, Hellions coming out, obviously. So some supply depots to uh, to to well get the gaps uh, closed, and of course the supply depots can l be lowered and raised whenever that is desired. So another expansion for our Zerg player, it's being harassed a little bit, but yeah, that's not going to uh, make any difference. 
Oh, the queen under a little bit of pressure. And the queen, although it's not a very... Uh, well, it's not light, so it doesn't take extra damage from these guys. They do 6 extra damage versus light. And they are not light, but they are... Uh, kind of vulnerable against these uh, these Hellions because the Hellions are really quick they have a long range not as long as the Queen or equal to the Queen maybe but um, yeah still it is kind of a problem so um, yeah all of these uh, uh, creep tumors under a little bit of pressure these creep tumors are probably going to spread uh, once the Hellions are under a little bit more control and yeah this one is now going to go down because this army is too big for him to handle there go the Zerklings and the Zerkling speed but he doesn't have that yet and there's the Banshee as well so the Banshee comes out it doesn't have cloak yet so it's just going to be harassing for a little bit and of course um, yeah, the Hellions are what draws most of the fire on the in the Zerg army. Yeah, the Hellions get the two queens down, and yeah, this uh, this hatchery I think is uh, is already given up. Um, oh, there come a couple of uh, of Zerglings. Yeah, they're not going to do anything. The cloak is up now, and that means that he uh, can't even detect them. And I don't know what. Oh, he's actually producing a queen. Wow. Although, this is probably going to go down. He did heal it once. Well, I guess infuse it. No, uh, transfuse it. That was it. Yeah, so it goes down. And um, the queen gets cancelled. I don't know if he actually cancelled it. Or if it just, well, stopped existing. But uh, yeah, the Banshee is doing a whole lot of damage. 7 kills, 11 kills, and 0 kills for the new guy. And the new guy, of course, he needs to get some kills going. Because, uh, well, you can't uh, stay behind on your, uh, on your brothers there. You need to make sure that you're useful. And yeah, those two benches are going to take out this uh, this hatchery once again. This time it's going to get cancelled, at least I hope. Oh! Yeah, it's going to get cancelled. I don't know why he didn't do it already. Yeah, it gets cancelled at the last second. And uh, yeah, he hoped that he could hold that off, but his Zerkling's not in time. Plus. Of course, you have the problem that these things are flying, so they need queens to defend, and <laughs> the queens are not very fast. So the Zerklings are going to chase this guy, and once the Hellion falls, the ground army is at least all uh, about... What's, what's shooting? Oh, over here. He's killing the destructible rocks. Did not expect him to use a Banshee for that. Because Banshees are kind of important in the front lines. I don't know where the rest of his Banshees are. Does he even still have them? Yes, he does. He has four Banshees flying around. And um, one Viking. The one Viking is there to scout for some Overlords. Try to take out those Overlords. He's going to meet one over here. And going to take that out. <laughs> yeah, once we're done with all that, the Banshees will keep on harassing. And I think he withdrew all of them. They're somewhere in his base now. So attacking these um, destructible rocks as well, uh, just like his opponent was doing. And yeah, we have a couple of Hellions coming out. The Hellion is, of course, very good against the Zerklings, but not so much against, um, well, the Queens in mass numbers. In the beginning of the game, of course, you have a pretty big number of these Hellions. You don't have that many uh, Queens available, so immediately losing two drones there, that's pretty big. And the Infestors coming out. Infestors, of course, really good against everything 
So both flying units and uh, ground units and armored, non-armored, it doesn't matter. Banshees are good against everything. Or sorry, infestors. Infestors are good against everything. Did I say banshees before as well? Ah, uh, I don't know. So yeah, both of the spore crawls are going to get taken down by the guy they're trying to protect against. And both of them actually get taken down. So, not even cancelling that. So yeah, a lot of banshees out to harass, well, the same four that were there before. But as you can see, he healed them up. He repaired them, that's why I thought he would uh, would have recalled them home, so uh, kind of for the scheduled maintenance. And he's going to take out this entire uh, thingy. This hatchery, he takes out uh, everything coming out of the eggs, and um, yeah, he should be able to take down these two as well, but well, the, uh, the investors that came out. But it's not going to do that. Wow, losing a lot of Zerglings, but he does get done what needed to be done. Uh, four queens are now to defend against this, and i um, not even sure if there are queens left. No, no queen here. Uh, I don't see a queen here either, or here. So he's giving up all of his... Uh, yeah, all of his bases... Well, it's extra production, basically. That's why he built this extra uh, hatchery, just to get some production going. Oh, a couple of auto turrets. That is just nasty. So yeah, they're going to obviously get taken down pretty easily, but... Oh, so annoying. Obviously, auto turrets. Yeah, in if you only place three, they're not that good. They can be really super good if they... Uh, if you, you use them in mass numbers, so if you have like 10 of these um, ravens out, because every raven can make 4, I believe, yeah. So you can see if you have 10 out, out 40 of these cannons are pretty hard to take down. Anyhow, uh, 5 queens out now, and we, have, we still have the infestors. He still doesn't have air units though. Ultralis are coming out with the Zerklings and um, wow the uh, pre-igniter upgrade or whatever it's called is out um, the infernal pre-igniter I believe it's called but yeah it uh, it's generally referred to as blue flame hellions and yeah the wow the, the, the Zerklings get taken down no problem So a couple of Banshees still alive, the uh, Raven of course is still alive. And yeah, a lot of uh, other stuff. Oh, all of the Banshees are still alive. Yes, four of them. And yeah, all of them still alive. Uh, lots of tanks, lots of Hellions. Uh, one Thor. <laughs> Kinda cute, two Thors actually, there's one behind him too. And yeah. Just going on to uh, to just attack here. Um, does have the Raven out to detect those uh, those those uh, creep tumors? Um, I don't know why he's scanning. He apparently, didn't think that uh, his Raven was fast enough or something like that. Wow! Lots of damage going down on these Ultralis, and they instantly melt. They are the biggest units the Zergling has, and or the Zer Zerg player has, and they just instantly melt. Same goes for the uh, Thors, by the way. But it seems that uh, both of them still have some units left, but the Ultralis are going to clean this up, but not before losing a couple of, uh, of these, well, drones. Oh, a couple more drones. Yeah, a couple more drones. Three, four extra, I think it's four extra drones dying there. And uh, that makes 30, 30 drones already died in this uh, in this game.
So yeah, the uh, the the, the uh, infested Terrans were there to protect against those flying units, but it's not going to be enough. No, they're just going to get taken out. The queens are not going to be able to keep up. So it seems that these uh, these ra uh, banshees are still highly effective against this army because they just can't get taken down without any air units. And um, is this going to burn down? I think it is. Yeah, he is going to let that burn down. Anyhow, um, yeah, losing his um, his sensor tower there. So at least something came out of this for the Zerg player. And yeah, what are we now going to see? The Queen's getting taken down by the Banshees and well, everyone. But then, wow, an <laughs> a very short fungal growth over everyone. And um, yeah, they get taken down for a few hit points, but it's not a major amount Nobody died. So uh, taking down the last mining base here, because this base is basically mined out. This one's mined out. This one is not mining. Uh, this one is semi-mining, but this was the only base that was really mining. So um, he might actually win this purely because he has more income. And that's, well, what the Zirkling does, of course. Just overwhelms his opponent with more forces. You can only do that if you have more income. So this is the only mining base currently. And uh, once he uh, he finds that, this is over. But yeah, the Ultralis, of course, are very hard to take down. Uh, tanks are really the only thing to deal with them. And um, yeah, they did increase the... Uh, since, since StarCraft 1, they increased how they work. So now they do uh, splash damage. I believe in a line. I'm not actually sure how that works now, but uh, they do splash damage because it was uh, pretty much impossible to kill anything with them uh, when people were holding the ramp like this. And wow, here come the infested Terrans. The uh, infestors get taken down, but the infested Terrans are going to be fine in taking down the tanks. Yeah, the infested Terrans just keep on shooting. There's still one uh, changeling there. Changeling just dropped to uh, to get a little bit of a scout on. And yeah, you have to click them. So actually, attack them manually because they won't get detected otherwise. Otherwise, they just stand there. And of course, against a player like me, who is a total noob, these uh, things will stay alive until they actually die out of old age, which uh, is in 150 seconds from when they get spawned. And yeah, total noob like me won't see the difference between a marine that's mine and a marine that's someone else's. Because as long as it doesn't attack me, I won't see it. And even if it's attacking me, you have about a 70% chance that I won't see it either. But that's why the system gives you warnings. That at least I uh, I get a warning that I'm being attacked. And I will see that. Or rather hear that. So um, lots of Zerklings out. And yeah, this group is now 50 large. But let's see. Um, because, well, there are only three Ultralisks and 37 Zerklings, so it's not a huge army. The Infestors are the main part of this. They are going to do the main damage if there's a big army coming, but there is no big army coming. So yeah, that was because this mining base was the only one that was still alive. Uh, this one, yeah, as you can see, was lifted off. Uh, this one was out of minerals, this one was out of minerals. So even though he has the production facilities and everything, he has everything except for minerals. And uh, yeah, he realizes that he is severely behind. And as you can see, 500 less minerals per minute. And that is with uh, five mules out. And yeah, all of these mules were going to time out in a few seconds because the mules only last 90 seconds 
But yeah, once everything times out, he will drop to, well, like 800 or 700, and that w would have been just no good. No way to come back. 68 Harvesters versus 17. And um, yeah, he came back from uh, 30 to 0 to 37 to 82. So um, there's that. And um, yeah, in the end, couldn't make it work. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Gigi.